Hey guys, girls, kids. I just wanted to show you guys like three different two stroke type systems. I just did a video and I thought about it. You know what? I should have explained a little bit differently with the different designs of motors. Here I have a 91B1 McCullough card engine, which was the first card engines I ever started with when I was 10 years old. Um, this is a reed valve engine and I'll show you, this is an intake that would go on this motor with a four pedal type intake. Okay. So as your piston is going, going up, it's drawing the fuel through these, these reed valves at a certain time, getting the fuel into the motor. Okay. And the reed valves, you can have lighter reed valve pedals or heavier, heavier reed valve pedals. So the lighter ones are, are quicker, quicker response and give you more snappy bottom end power. And the heavier ones for, are more for RPM, high RPM, so they don't, they don't break, but it'll give you still good um, uh, RPM, right? So that's an old McCullough. This is an old BM-130 or B-bomb, they called them. This was actually built into a chainsaw. It's got a compression release here. And it's a rotary valve motor, okay? So the way it works is on the side of the crankcase, it has these two kind of halves that seal together with this stainless steel plate here, okay? The stainless steel plate in here moves back and forth and controls the timing of the intake for the fuel delivery of the engine. They're a real tricky engine to tune, and they're the best engine builders in the world use these type of motors in cart racing dirt bikes um and a few different applications but go-karting was basically the uh most um used of these rotary valves uh the ones i used to race the formula a engines that i raced in japan and charlotte when i, I raced in the world cup races we used i used crg rotary valve engines and they rev about 18 19 000 rpm I raced uh, some engines that Peter De Bruin made, a guy from Holland. He was like one of the best kart engine builders ever. So this old Titan 40 that I just showed you here actually has this system. Some old motors had it and some old dirt bikes like Suzuki and Yamaha had it as well. So those are your two different uh, early version type of two-stroke motors. Uh, predominantly, reed valve is more popular. Then in today's today's type type motors, here's a cutaway of a 592, and this is just a, a 372 piston, I think, but it, or 572, it doesn't matter. I'm just showing you the same thing. So as the piston goes up, it's letting fuel in through the charge of the intake port. As it goes down, it pushes it up through the crankcase through the transfer ports right here, right? And it goes up again, it's drawing the fuel in through the piston port part of it. So it's very important to have a nice fitting piston and not a wore out one or it's too sloppy and doesn't allow the charge to get in and out of out of the um, cylinder properly. So when, you, when a person is porting cylinders, you never want to go too wide on your intake, wider than the skirt of the piston, or you, you won't get the proper charge. It'll be like having a broken reed in a reed engine. It'll just run rich and give you no power. Or like having a rotary valve with a, with a broken valve, okay, let's say. So I just want to show you that before you watch the next video. And I'm just going to link them together and just have some fun with it. I'm having a good night, and that's the way it should be. Catch you all later. Hey, it's Donnie Walker. Good evening. It's Tuesday night. September something. It's been a unique day. I've um, we have a house that we've been renting in Nanaimo uh, by the Walker Saw Shop that um, we finally given up and we're moving out of. So I went down there today to uh, move a few things up to this house here in Parksville where we're at now. Where uh, me and my wife have our our daycare that we own and um, and I work in the basement here in the underground saw shop that you guys have been seeing. Today I dropped off a bunch of saws for my brother Johnny at Walker Saw Shop for you fine customers and picked up some more. 
got a 395, a 3120, a couple 500s, an 026, an old 266 that someone sent me. And I found an old 353 in the back yard there that they're throwing out. I can't believe they throw out such good stuff. Um, missing the top end and carburetor, but the thing looks like brand new. Also in the boneyard, they're hucking out this beautiful Titan 40 series. This thing was made from 1950 to 1952. 74 cc's. This thing is all complete. It's actually a rotary valve intake. And if you don't understand that, I'm going to explain that here in a minute. Of uh, different types of two-strokes that they have. So this type of type of saw, because it's a float carburetor, like a lot of old ones that were the first one-man saws, is he had float carburetors, so you cannot run them on the side, uh, on the sides or up and down straight, right? Like before uh, when Tillotson came out with the diaphragm carburetor, which was quite early in the years. Eh? Tillotson was the first innovator of 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 diaphragm carburetor. So you'd have to what you do is you turn the blade here. Right, okay. Now you can now you can fall with it and uh, instead of buck with it, right? So then you turn it back, lock it, lock it, lock it back in position. Now you can buck with it. Pretty unique. This thing's really cool. You know, it's actually in pretty good shape. It actually still turns over. Um, it's got the old kind of round tooth half inch pitch kind of chain on it which is really neat um this handle in the back you hold on to then you can hold on to the front here and there when it's turned sideways right really unique so it's a titan 40 series there's the off and on switch there's the rope to pull it over and yes okay it's not grabbing oh there it goes grabs it's pulling the motor over right now See the fan turning? See if you can see that. Come on, come on, come on, do it again. See? The flywheel's turning, right? So yeah, pretty cool. The muffler's still in perfect shape. I'm gonna get this thing running. This is this is one old saw that I really think is super cool. And I'm gonna attack this one day and, and get it get it running and show you guys. It's just so cool. So the difference in between in in two strokes is you think about it okay most chainsaws these days because of the simplicity of it and less moving parts is are, are all piston part okay so here's an x-torque uh cylinder as the piston moves up and down with the skirt it allows the fuel to go in and out okay and that's why you have to have a nice intake sealing system and it has to seal properly across the port to both sides of the intake okay if you if you port a uh, piston port motor too wide it won't seal right on the piston and you won't get the proper charge it's like having a broken reed in a reed engine so now i'm going to show you our reed valve engine which are like most dirt bikes and older go-kart engines and a lot of newer go-kart engines up here is a um that's an iami um reed reed motor 100 cc okay that's got reed valves in it and it would use like a 34 millimeter makuni carburetor okay or a 24 millimeter ibia here's an older school one that's air cooled same thing it's it's a reed valve as as well right most all your fastest motors in the world and dirt bikes and go-kart engines are all reed valves it's a better way to control the fuel system and to make good power there's a um vortex 125 motor then i over here i have an actually a really old bm 130 i think it's called this was actually built into a chainsaw years ago and i acquired this motor from my dad it's a uh 135 cc um rotary valve 135 cc look at the size of the carburetor that went on that had a huge McCune like type 38 millimeter or something on it, eh? Yeah. I don't really need this motor. I think I'm going to sell it to someone that needs a uh, collectible uh, BM engine. It's got a compression release in it because it was built as a saw. And those things hauled ass. 
There's a couple cylinders of mine, 3120s that I got split heads, but uh, I'm going to work on them later. So yeah, that's the three different types of two strokes you have. Rotary valve intake. Reed valve intake. And today's all piston port engines that is more simplified and less parts and just easier tunable. But this thing's very cool. Look at it, man. The muffler's in perfect shape. Uh, just a cool unit. I can't believe this was in the dumpster today. I spied it and I went, what are you guys doing? Like, they're just... I can't believe they just throw stuff like this out. But yeah. Titan 40. Pretty cool. Had a busy day. Dropped off some saws down to Walker's there and picked up more and uh, moving some stuff from our house. So, um... I'm here tonight, just made a nice stir fry for me and Shelly for dinner. And now I'm unloading some stuff and uh, just bullshitting to you guys. So anyways, just thought I'd show you guys this and um, we'll show you some progress with it later. It ain't going to be tomorrow, that's for sure. I got a lot to do these days. But yeah, it's only yeah 74 cc's this unit. But being a rotary valve intake, rotary valve, rotary valve intake systems on two strokes make great power and that's why a lot of people used them years ago then a lot of people think rotary valve oh like a wankel engine no totally different uh mr wankel out of germany years ago um i forget his first name but they they were actually like a triangle piston like rx7 engines mazda uh, took on that motor um like the wankel engine uh, totally cool too uh, so they're sort of like a two stroke as well <coughs> Mazda did a great job with those. Uh, a friend of mine used to race uh, rotary rotary uh, motors in his Mazda. He had like a tri piston one or something. The thing like produced almost a thousand horsepower. It was just amazing. So it's like it's they're like a two stroke, and you want to run two stroke mix in them as well to keep the seals working properly in the in the rotors of the of the machine. So, anyways, just a little bit of bullshitting tonight and uh, talk and. Uh, yeah, I better get at her and get finished cleaned up here. So keep your saw in the wood, stick and ash, rubbing the road. Your old saw's going if you have them. If not, down the road, we'll get them going. Okay? When we have time, when we're more retired. You know, for now, we need to make a living and keep on ticking. So have a great night. Catch you all later. Bye now.